guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Monday, January 1st, a uh, day after the Celtics took down the Spurs. First day of the new year. First day uh, of 2024. Uh, technically going to be our third video, though, because we dropped the Spurs recap. Then we dropped Talking C's. And now we're dropping this on the second, uh, taking a look uh, at everything going on in the world of the Celtics. Uh, but as usual, before that, let's give away some popcorn today, shall we? Let's see. Who is winning some in pop Nito today? Go over to the wheel. Five entries. There's never been a better time to enter. Comment what's popping or email us saying what's popping with a chance uh, for a chance, I should say, to win yourself some popcorn. You'll get a $10 gift card if you win. We got five entries today uh, to win some in pop Nito. Spin the wheel and see who is getting themselves some popcorn. Today, we got. Ram Ramsey's out time. <laughs> Ramsey's been fiending for some popcorn. He's been wanting it, and now they'll get the chance to test it out. The mighty god. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Thank you to Impop Nito once again. Again, comment what's popping or email us saying what's popping at hbtcpod at gmail.com. And Ramsey's, if we don't respond to your comment, send us an email at hbtcpod at gmail.com with your name, phone number, and email, and we'll get you set up with some popcorn. But Without further ado, let's get into some Celtic stuff. Bleacher Report has been on a heater lately. Zach Buckley of Bleacher Report put out two different articles talking about potential Celtics trades. Uh, one naming three targets and one naming three top priorities. I'll read the priorities and then the targets because, shocker, they're very similar. Um, mm. Top trade priorities, he said, interior insurance, find a backup wing, search for cheap shooting, and then, shocker, his three options for trade targets in a separate article fall perfectly in line with those as Chetty Osman, which is the backup wing or shooting uh, John Contrar, which is the wing and then uh, interior insurance, Andre Drummond. Those are the three options they give. I stand by if the Celtics trade for Andre Drummond, it would be the funniest shit of all time because they just sent him to the free throw line a million times earlier in the season. Uh, thoughts on those three names and, or those three ideas. Sam. So, <clears throat> I legitimately think that the interior insurance is the, the most important thing they need to do, if anything, because I think they can find an extra backup wing in O'Shea Brissett. We've been talking a lot about him lately because he's been getting a little bit more burn in recent weeks, which is good. I like O'Shea Brissett. I think he brings a good energy to the team. And I think if he makes threes consistently, he's really going to be able to be a key contributor in some short minutes for the Celtics, because when he actually plays, he oftentimes has his fingerprints all over some positive momentum for the Celtics. So what is he shooting from three this year? Do I, I need to have this up. Whatever it is, it's on a very small sample size. It was 40 last time I looked, but that 37 was like five. Or so, ago. so it's not bad, but he's probably only taken like, 12 threes 12 uh 16 threes okay yeah it's kind of close but the, the sample size is not there the volume is not there he's not somebody they necessarily want taking a ton of shots from there right now but if he's able to improve which i'm sure they have him doing work and i'm sure he's putting in the work he'll be a great found money guy andre drummond greatest rebounder of all time welcome to the club buddy you can come join and, and hang out with Luke Cornett and Nimi hmm. and lay in wait for uh, Al Horford slash Porzingis to need the day off. I mean, we talked about Drummond not long ago. He had a monster game. He had, what, 25 rebounds or something like that? Ten of them were he, offensive? Yeah, he had another one, too. He's been on a heater lately. In his last five games, Andre Drummond has had uh, – or his last three, 25, 16, and 23 rebounds. So he's since they put him in the starting lineup, he's been – dominant in that area andre drummond's like a weird guy though because he's in this place where we're like is he washed maybe or is it just he doesn't really fit in today's nba where you really want your big guys to be able to do something outside of the paint just to I, the floor i think at this point andre drummond would be a slightly better version of namias Keda. i think he's a better rebounder 
I think he's probably slower. Uh, I don't think he's going to be very good on the perimeter. That said, neither of the Celtics backup bigs are. And so I stand on if you're going to get a backup big, you probably want one that does something different than the other two, not just a slightly better version. Because at that point, just keep playing with Luke Cornette, keep developing to Keda and use the spot on something else. So I don't know how in I am on Andre Drummond. He's a fine player. I think there is a spot for him on a team. I think he can make an impact. I think the rebounding is important. I just think the Celtics already have guys who can do similar things to what he does. No, I mean, listen, the two of us are not on the Celtics need to do some about their third string big guys train. No, because Cornette has mostly been fine. And Kate is exciting in the sense that you feel like he has a little bit of a ceiling to him. So you want to see him get as much run as he can in timely moments where if you bring in Drummond, you're going to kind of cut at least that part of it off. If not Cornette entirely, who's been earning like a good amount of minutes, like he's been fine. There's no reason to, to really just be like, screw this guy. I, I don't want him out there. So let's go get Andre Drummond. Now, Andre Drummond is not somebody that's going to cost a lot of money or not money, a lot of uh, assets, probably a second round pick. He'll fit in the TPE, correct? Because he only makes like two million. He's on a minimum, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in that sense, he's like a free guy. But is he really free if you're sacrificing guys you believe in, in, in guys that you want to see develop? Maybe not. The other two, Shetty Osman and John Conkar, Conchar, fine. I know Conchar is someone that we've heard the Celtics being linked to earlier back in November. Yeah. They like his shooting. They like his cheap deal and his deal spans over multiple seasons. So Mm -hmm. he would be someone that you can not only work with for the second half of 2023-24, but also build build on top of, keep developing him, or trade him again to have extra salary to throw around the trades. Sure, fine, whatever. Yeah, that's the best one for me. I, I again, I understand why the Bleach Report's writing all these articles, and in their defense, they're writing these for every single team. So you kind of have to hit all the points. But there is no team that needs anything less than the Celtics need stuff. Like they don't need. Like they're good, right? They don't need. There's no holes on the roster. Really, the biggest holes are. Luke Cornett's not as good as a second string center. Well, yeah, because he's a third string center. He doesn't need to be as good as a second string center. Uh, they don't have enough depth at the wing position. Well, what about Sam Hauser? What about O'Shea Brissett, who's been playing well lately? Like, they have quote unquote holes on the roster, but the holes on the roster is that they don't go 10 deep, they only go nine deep. So that's not a very big problem to have. And even then, they probably do go 10 deep with some guys you can throw in there at the end. So, I, I like you said, like I've said, like we've said over and over, Celtics don't really need anything. We can look at different trade options for at a million different angles. You know, maybe something pops if a team, you know, trades for somebody, then buys them out. Maybe something pops if um, an unexpected team decides to rebuild. But right now, there's just not much out there that you'd expect to become available. So it just feels like Brad has done a good enough job to give them great guys to have on the roster. Mm -hmm. I think Brissett is just like the prime example that he hasn't seen consistent minutes this year yet. Anytime he gets the opportunity, he looks pretty solid. There aren't a lot of times where you see him playing and you're like, damn, this guy, like, he's hurting them. You're just like, oh, wow, he got a steal. Oh, he got an offensive rebound. Oh, big dunk. Those are good things. Great. I'm in favor of O'Shea. I don't really want to see them bring in a Chetty Osmond or a Conchar to cut off his avenue to getting extra time either. It's just I'm excited by the guys on the roster. And yeah. I know it's not exciting uh, headline material for us to title the video as, but I think they're worth talking about, in, or at least at least the people in the comments being excited about, because they've done just about anything you could ask of them. And they haven't been given, aside from Cornette, the greatest of opportunities to showcase what they can do. Playing in a... a staggered situational role where you're only out there every once in a while is very difficult because you're trying so hard to prove yourself and to take into account that percent has shot 37% from three, albeit on 16 attempts. And also just been a menace all over the floor is remarkable. Cornette being able to walk into the starting lineup on Friday after not playing in two weeks and have a 20 point game, including a big dunk at the end to help them go up in the fourth quarter. That's awesome. That's impressive. People should be happy about that. Kata, somebody that 
is on the younger side at 24. It doesn't mean he's 19 and has all this promise about him, but he has strengths. He's a good rebounder. He can get up and dunk. He's not the greatest finisher around the rim in terms of non-dunks, but if he's able to improve on that and also move his feet a bit better, he can be a great big body to bring off the bench. This is all things that people should be excited about aside from trades. Is it cool for us to talk about Andre Drummond? Yeah, it is. It's funny. He's the greatest rebounder ever. He's put up some crazy stat lines since he's become a starter in Chicago. And he fits in the TPE. I don't hate it. If they do it, I'm not going to be slamming my desk. But it, none of it feels necessary is the point. You have the best record in the league. I understand the insurance thing. You're like, well, what if Porzingis gets hurt? What if Horford's age catches up to him? It's all valid. And it wouldn't hurt to have somebody, maybe maybe in a Blake Griffin type role where they only get minutes when there's going to be somebody out of the rotation. Like last year, Blake was just hanging out on the bench until Horford needed a day off. He wasn't taking minutes away from Cornette in the regular season. Yeah, you just don't really need anything. I think that's the end of the day. Honestly, if you want to talk about end of the roster, final roster spots, just go get Blake Griffin back. That that would make me happy. That would be the move that would make me the happiest. If they just went and said, Blake, you had your time off at the family, join us for the playoff run, and then you can retire a champion if we win. <clears throat> That's all I want. I'll take it. Get Blake his ring and move on with everything. We haven't heard anything about Blake Griffin in a while. I wonder nah. what is actually going on with that. Because I think the people here still like him. Like any time, like mm -hmm. when we talk about him today, some of my comment be like, Blake Griffin rules. Because he does. And I think the way that you mentioned it is kind of interesting. Like he did get his little break from basketball and he could very well just kind of show up and be a part of the ride. Why not? That'd be cool. They all like him. I'd Doesn't like it. Hurt. Speaking of the people liking uh, players, the Spurs fans in San Antonio were big fans of Derek White. Uh, when the Celtics went down there, Celtics fans were there invested in the cheering too, but I think some Spurs fans got in on the action. San Antonio does love Derek White. Uh, he got I'm some all star chance. That. What uh, did you see? How many fucking green shirts were there yesterday? Or, uh, there are a lot. That doesn't mean San Antonio doesn't like Derek White. They were doing actually just finish the news dumb and then I'll I'll like start. You're a piece of shit. You know that. I didn't think it was going to go that long. I'm sorry. <laughs> Derek White got all-star chance in San Antonio. They were chanting, White's an all-star. Drew Holiday get into the action. Celtics bench liked it. After the game, Greg Popovich talked about him, said, I just couldn't be more proud. Um, when he first came here, I don't think he believed he belonged to the NBA to watch him develop through the years, starting in the G League, playing with us, and then making more steps in Boston. has been a thrill. One of the greatest guys ever, and his confidence has exploded. It's been a process. He's been in the league seven years, but he's a great story. said he's thrilled for him. Uh, said he had a national understanding of the game with his IQ, all that stuff. Uh, talked about how he got to watch Manu practice hard, Manu Ginobili. Um, said he was a great example player for Derek, and then Derek, in response to it all, said, I'm just thankful and grateful. I'm just trying to go out there and help us win. I think if I was to make an all-star game, it's because of how much we're winning and the type of team we have, so I'm thankful to be a part of this uh, team and this organization and the culture that we're building. And me making it or not making it doesn't change the fact that I'm just thankful to be here. Yes, there were a lot of green shirts in San Antonio, but that doesn't change the fact that the Spurs organization and Spurs fans everywhere love Derek White, uh, and I'll let you get angry for whatever reason now if you'd like to <laughs> score early this nfl season with FanDuel, america's number one sports book right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action nfl the app is so easy to use there's a wide range of betting options including you got spreads you get your player props, you got over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. There's nothing wrong with us talking about this because this is a legitimate thing. There's a legitimate push for Derek White to be an all-star. But I don't really think you were doing this, but I've seen this online. To push that it was in, I've had people text me about this. To push that it's the the Spurs fans that got this going, is just not true. It's not. When the Derek White is an All Star chance, were going around. There were boos coming from the home fans that stuck around to watch their team get killed by thirty. Let's not pretend this was a full arena of 
of eager Spurs fans to watch their team compete. This was all of the Celtics fans that either traveled to San Antonio or are local to San Antonio and never get to see the Celtics. There's one game a year that the Celtics are there. They are going to stay till the final buzzer. You bet your ass. I saw Himmelsbach tweet about this yesterday. And he said it was a guy in a Paul Pierce jersey that started the chance. So it was not the Spurs fans chanting for Derek White. I do understand that Derek White is well liked there, as he should be. Derek White, a fantastic individual, fantastic basketball player, does everything right, and he's not a pain in the ass. But if I was a Spurs fan, I don't know. It, it depends how they feel about him. But I'd be kind of heated if everyone was like getting in on it. It's like, all right. He he didn't leave. It wasn't his choice to leave, but like I don't know. I think that's like it, it there were plenty of Celtics fans there that that were the legs behind all that. Let's not play make believe. Sure. <laughs> uh the point of this segment was supposed to be it was cool that Derek White got the chance. I don't know how it turned into something cynical, but I guess I should have expected it. Uh you don't pay attention, that's why. I I can't have it. I can't have it. I just yeah, can't. I, you're a piece of shit. You're the worst. I, I'm trying to talk about something cool, and you just have to ruin it. You just had to like, shit on it. something. Why'd you, I like, why couldn't it just clarify. be a cool thing? I, I think we awful. owe our listeners uh, legitimate news, and that's fake, <laughs> fake news. <laughs> it, it, it was not. There's a zillion Celtics fans there, and they're pumped that they get to see their team for the one time they're going to get to see them all year. Of course yeah. it's the Celtics fans doing it. As far as Derek White being an all-star, I think it's legit. His numbers are respectable. They're exceeding any kind of thought that we would have had of his performance heading into the season. He's wildly efficient, which is the best thing of all time. Efficiency should be like the number one thing that people look at to see who the best guys in the league are, even though he's uh, playing with the luxury of not having the focus on him at all times. But it's clear that Popovich and the Spurs love him. When he got traded here, I believe it was on the Reddick pod, he talked about the, the exit from San Antonio and how Pop kind of was like, listen, like they're going to take good care of you there. Things are going to go well. It's a good organization. Brad's great. And the relationship that Derek White had built with Pop was truly a big deal in his career because like it's talked about here, he didn't really have the confidence when he came to the league. Scout kept talking about yesterday. It was something that White mentioned when he talked to Redick. They had to beat it into his brain that he was an NBA level player. Never mind an all star, just somebody that belonged in the NBA after going to junior college in Johnson and Wales, which was the cooking school that Drew Carter and Scout were trying to figure out which school it was. Shout out Johnson and Wales. They have one in Rhode Island, but they had one in Colorado too. And he had just such a unique journey to the NBA. Of course, he's not going to like believe in himself. So shout out to the Spurs for helping him realize his talent. Of course, that's a big deal. And, and his journey to where he is now is widely impacted by San Antonio, too. Yeah, I just thought it was a cool thing. Also, Spurs, good people, because they continuously help Celtics out in trades. There was the Derek White trade, which was like, at the time, it felt like his days in San Antonio might be numbered just because he might have been uh getting kind of too big for what they were trying to do i think we talked about this like what if he stayed with the spurs well his minutes might have taken a hit because they're trying to develop younger guys and then also when uh Celtics want to get rid of noah vonley so they just dumped him to san antonio yeah i forgot about the noah vonley thing to be honest the, i didn't bull bull end up there too or did he no he went to orlando um but yeah I just thought it was a cool thing. I didn't expect it to turn into this whole fucking thing. I just wanted to talk about Derek White and the quotes and pop and all that stuff. But uh, there were a lot of Celtics fans there doing it. Uh, and it, I mean, it's always just cool to hear about Derek White and his journey and stuff. And I know Greg Popovich was a big part of it. Obviously wrote about Derek White last year. And it was cool to hear um, sort of some of those things uh, brought up again by pop. But uh, next thing we have is a bunch of NBA executives uh, who spoke with Steve Volpet are effectively terrified of the Celtics. That is basically the storyline here. Uh, if you read all the quotes, that's basically what they say. There's a lot of quotes here. Uh, I'm going to skim through them really quick just so you get the gist so it's not just me talking for Big Celtics minutes, circle but, jerk time. Um, get ready. Pretty much. So uh, 
The way they came back to run over Sacramento and the two LA teams after screwing up against the Warriors says a lot. Before they'd fall into a one-on-one with Tatum and Brown when things got tough, but you're not seeing that anymore. Those guys are giving it up more than they should, or more when they should. And they've got too many people who can beat you. Uh, another exec said Boston's defense has been huge, but the biggest thing on the other end of the floor is how they're moving the ball. Isolation basketball has been their default. If they're not playing well, it's always because of one reason, ball movement. That was the biggest issue within the coaching staff, the inability of the team to recognize it consistently the value of moving the ball. And that's what that coaching staff got all bent out of shape. Uh, but if those guys are buying into what Missoula, excuse me, Missoula is asking, they keep passing and cutting. Who oh boy, watch out. Uh, <clears throat> terrified. Uh, and don't forget Horford moving to the bench and giving that group an anchor, said another source, or the latter source. Uh, Brad made some major moves, and they were obviously good ones. But guys still had to buy in. I said, listen, anybody in the world <laughs> would trade Rob Williams uh at, for Porzingis and Marcus Smart for Holiday. That's not even a discussion, not even close. Those are major, major upgrades. Uh, the order in which the trade happens, uh, I hear cause some debate there, but the conclusion of what Boston ended up with was a steal. Said I'm a Marcus Smart guy, I love what he brings, blah, 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 et cetera. But I don't think there's any doubt that Drew's an upgrade in terms of team uh, chemistry. Not sure. saying those guys didn't like Marcus, but I didn't like it at all. Uh, excuse me, I'm not saying that at all, but I've never heard anybody, player, coach, front office guy, ever have anything negative to say about Drew Holiday. Uh, Everyone's personality can either put you in a good feel uh, or put you on edge. Marcus is intense, but I talk to people who've coached him, and there are times when his personality becomes an issue to deal with. And if you can get some of the same things uh, without the adjective of his irritational exuberance, uh, I think Drew is a better player and an easier personality to live with. Uh, let's see what else. Last quote is He's a number three. He ain't one or two. He ain't Batman or Robin. He's Alfred and the Butler, and that's okay uh, in that role with his talent. The Butler can kill you, and he's found a role. Uh, with his efficiency, basically everyone is like, "Yeah, is that they're terrifying." Drew? I think so. I'm not sure. Okay. I just put them in here in the order, so I assume so. But yeah, there are. Uh, oh, that's a lot to unpack here. Basically, Celtics nasty teams around the league scared of the moves they made. Uh, they are very, very good, <laughs> and uh, basically saying they're unstoppable, uh, effectively. Uh, and I'm just double checking. No, that sorry, the Alfred quote was about Porzingis. So. There you go. When I first read it, I kind of thought it was about Porzingis. It makes sense. Like Porzingis doesn't need to be the guy with the ball all the time, but it's great that he can be. And him being able to do that is one of the reasons why that first kind of section of this is true, where they're not going to isolation as much because they can trust him. They know they can pass him the ball or post him up, and the result is likely going to be good. Porzingis is excellent at getting himself to the free throw line. He was ass in the first quarter against San Antonio in the first half. And he still had like six free throws. He was able to put pressure on the defense, make them foul him and get easy looks to maybe get himself going. He didn't really get going, but free throws are key to that. So him being there is just a big difference maker. And it's something we kind of throw back and forth every once in a while. When we talk about who the most impactful guy is, Derek White is the best net rating, but I feel like when Porzingis is there, it's just so much different. I know they've won big games without him being there, but just the difference he can make in a close game opening night against the Knicks. He makes a big three, uh, the Pistons game. He took over down the stretch. He had a bunch of buckets, even though it was the Pistons, it was still impressive to see him step up in such a big way. I just love that they went and got him. I, I, at the time missed, I I was upset that they got rid of Marcus. I was always in on the Porzingis part of the trade though. Cause when the Brogdon thing happened, we were amped go watch the video. It's always tough to give up Marcus who, I don't know. I'm not saying uh, any of the talent stuff is incorrect. It's a fact. Those guys are certainly better players, but it does suck that he's not on the team anymore. I'll stand by it. Yeah, no, I mean, you wish he was around for this. Um, Some quotes I missed, uh, which is the title of the article. They're almost unstoppable if they play that way. Uh, When talking about the ball movement, (laughs) they rely a lot on a three-point shot, and the three-point shot can go south periodically. Uh, Just talking about that volatility and the last thing was it's funny everybody's looking at dame going to milwaukee to play with Giannis, and all of a sudden boston comes under the radar um adding holiday to what they already had in porzingis i think it stunned everybody everybody's paying attention to the bright light with the all-star and boston swooped in and won the offseason guys around the league were pissed that they were able to pull that off which is just (laughs) super funny to hear (laughs) isn't it funny though because when the dame thing happened we came on here and we were like kind of like uh Drew Holiday, are they going to do it? He was in a thumbnail. He was in a thumbnail before he got and traded it, here. And so. it happened so fast. It was like yeah. instant. It was like two days later. I was driving to the gym, and I had to turn around. I was like, video time, baby. We're, we're going. 
What a sequence that was. I know when we were doing it, it was like, do they really want to give up Rob? Like, Rob's going to be the guy. You know, you really want to give up Rob? You kind of string yourself that thin. It's the same conversations everyone has now with the, do you believe in Cornette? Well, looks like we do believe in him. And giving up Rob is not an issue. Yeah, September 28th, we published Damian Lillard Traders with Bucks and the Drew Holiday Celtics trade idea. October 1st. To Cam. Mm -hmm. The morning of, on October 1st, Celtics, quote, appeal to Drew Holiday as trade destination. And then later that day, on the 1st, breaking news, Celtics trade for Drew Holiday. It was <laughs> one, two, bang, bang, within a span of three days, he was on the Celtics. I, I feel like, I don't know why, it just, it felt like, not we knew, but it felt like everyone was kind of like, this might, this is going to happen. It was like this the one time happen. the Facebook photoshops were making a little bit of sense. I was like, yeah, oh, like money kind of works, like fit works. He's not going to stay in Portland. Like there definitely are more dominoes to fall. And then, like you said, bang, and ESPN or whoever put it out, Woj, they had the Photoshop ready. It was just a picture of him with that, that Celtics jersey. And hey, I'm not saying that we called the two biggest trades of the offseason. But we did kind of call the two biggest Celtics trades of the offseason. Like we were on yeah. Porzingis. You were you we, were we, on Porzingis in particular had before it. it happened. We and had that on lock. We were just kind of like poking around with the holiday thing. Like, what if, huh? That would be sick. Mm -hmm. Porzingis was on a thumbnail before he got traded to the Celtics. Uh we were there. We were ready. We were talking about it, and then it happened. So uh, pat us on the back a little bit. Good for us. Anyways, Celtics, basically the, the whole part of that, uh, the whole point of that segment was teams around the league are not happy with the Celtics. They're scared of them. And you can see why when you watch the last you know stretch of four games uh, of them just stomping three quality teams and then the Spurs, which the Spurs are the Spurs or six games. I forgot about the Pistons or Raptors in between, but uh, so Pistons. some stomps of good teams uh, in there. Next thing we got is more Derek White from San Antonio. Now, let me pull up the clip here. Um, Derek White was talking about a clip of him uh, and Victor Wembanyama. Wembanyama got the ball, was out in transition, uh, and was going for a super cool dunk. And Derek White, as he usually does, was ready to go for a chase down block. Now, Derek White is six foot four, six foot five. Victor Wembanyama is seven foot four, seven foot five. Uh, and so, as Clutch Points put it kindly here. Derek Weiss made a wise business decision. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can see Victor Wembanyama I'm going to gather the ball at the three point line, take two steps and Derek White just duck out of the way and decide, you know what? Maybe I'm not going to try for this block. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know how often all you in the comments are uh, playing basketball. But when I played today, my gather starts at like the elbow of that. Yep. So sometimes if, a little closer. Yeah. If it's a good stretch, if I get some good like momentum in, then I can maybe gather there, do a little, do a little two step or a euro or something. But it's usually uh, <clears throat> inside the, the free throw line. It might be the second hash mark actually. <laughs> now I'm a quote at from it. a quote from Derek White uh, when asked about it. He goes, "I'm not an idiot." <laughs> <laughs> he said about trying to go for it. I was hoping he would take another dribble and then I could try to, you know, do the strip or the steal, but he picked it up and I never saw it again. So I was just trying to get out of the way. That was crazy, which is just an all time quote. You can look at him. Look at Derek White. Look for one minute to put it down. Yeah, look end. at him. He's like, okay, is he going to put the ball down? And then he just realizes that he's not putting that ball down. He's like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> It was crazy to see kind of how Wemby's presence had an effect on the way the Celtics were doing things. Mm -hmm. He's effectively somebody who can defend two guys at once, especially if you put him on the weak side. He's leading leading he, blocks. He he's insane. He's crazy. The sheer my boy Ray, who his grandmother watches the the pregame streams every single night. So shout out to Graham. Shout out. Graham immediately texted Ray. First thing she texted him, holy fuck, this guy's tall. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we were watching with uh I was watching at the New Year's Eve thing with some of my friends and they are they watch the Celtics like most of the games, another one watches a, a few games sprinkled in, whatever, and they were just looking at him, they're like, What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Holy shit, one be uh they're just like what the It hell? was funny. He started off like 0 of three, like he missed like an easy paint shot over Porzingis, missed some threes. I was like, they drafted this guy first, 0 of three, bum. <laughs> Then he made like and then, four in a row. Yeah, and then they started falling. He's averaging 1.3 steals and 3.1 blocks a game. 
as a rookie. Like, I'm not saying this guy's going to average five blocks, but this guy might average five blocks a game down you the said line. 3.1 steals, too? 1.3 steals, oh, 3.1 1. 1 blocks. Dyslexic <laughs> with my hearing. Yeah, I mean, this guy's insane. His, his splits aren't great, but once they get a good team around him and once he develops a little bit more, puts a little muscle on, like, you can see, so usually when rookies are struggling, you you may, might say, ah, is this guy to be a boss? You know, is he is he going to be a different player than we expected? You can see what 1B is going to be, and it's terrifying. Like, you can see what is happening. It's just the team's not very good right now. <clears throat> so It is crazy how bad the Spurs are. Like, we've <laughs> got bad. to see some bad teams over the last week now. After, I mean, the whole thing has been, the Celtics have had the hardest strength of schedule, and they have the best record. But we've actually got to see some ass Three games teams. in a row. Yeah, the, the difference is crazy. Some of these guys are just out there running. Yeah, the Spurs not very good. I mean, that was the the Mamu Kalashvili air ball was the worst <laughs> shot I've ever seen in an NBA game. That was. That was I need to pull it up. No that was word. the crazy. Yeah, pull shot it I've up. Seen. Pull it up. We were watching. I, I said this on the the post game last night. We were watching, and my buddy took the over on the game, and he just was just like head and hands he was like holy shit we started crying laughing uh oh, at funny. that shot it is funny <laughs> it was nuts i need to find it let's see i think it was his second to last three in the night no it was his third to last three he, this dude was chucking threes at the end of the game how many uh he took three in the fourth quarter his hero jason tatum was on the other bench so he had to impress he muted i'm not seeing the oh, three you're good now I can't find it. It's not. I went to the box score to try to find it. Well, now I'm annoyed because I don't want to take it longer. Oh, maybe it was a two. How did it have been a two though? It was in the corner. Uh, I'm not going to spend. Line. Yeah, I, I think it was. Line. I think it was a two. We got to find it. All we right. promised the people we find I know, it. I know. This <laughs> shot looked like it was an NFL kicker taking a field goal when it was real windy. It was in the fourth quarter, right? It was in the fourth quarter. No, I think it's glitched because I see a missed three point shot, but it's a gelato banton layup. And so they messed Oh this no, up. they they wiped it from the internet because they said we yeah, cannot they... have this out there showing that this is someone that plays in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they'll have the back to back Randall air ball threes in there from today. <clears throat> Not sure. Um, yeah, no, I unfortunately can't find it. Uh they're just Sad. they they're they're wiping it. <clears throat> uh, I will say it is funny because so I like Mamu. He's cool. Uh, when he was coming out of the draft, I tweeted about him. I said, I really like what he brings. He's a good ball handler. I think oh, he was developed agent this, this. You. <clears throat> Whatever. No, he DM'd me. <laughs> oh, he DM'd you? Yeah. He said, it was like time to prove people wrong, my guy. He's a nice, like we had a nice conversation or whatever, but it was like a small conversation, but it was, it was you funny should, to see. I'm you like, should find a tweet of, I'm sure somebody <laughs> tweeted the air bomb and be like, we proven him wrong or what? I can't find it. I just I'm trying just to find. Send it to him. But no, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Anyways, uh, next thing we got Gordon Hayward recently talked about the 2019 Celtics uh, on an episode of Paul George's podcast, Podcast P, uh, and he basically said, "I might actually listen." To this. Uh, quote: "We had all had too many agendas, and the agenda to win the whole thing wasn't the main one." Uh, which uh, anybody who watched that team, like. You could see it on the court, uh, but I don't know. I it's gear sent this to me on Twitter. Um, that was the first like t- thing I, I saw it from, and he was like, "I hope Gordon comes back eventually. I think he gets a bad rep, and I kind of agree. I don't think he got really a fair shake in Boston. I think he was pretty good when he was healthy. It's just the teams underperformed, and so he was always kind of the scapegoat. But it did suck that he was hurt a lot of the time. <clears throat> he missed the birth of a child for the Celtics. Yes. How can anyone be like this guy didn't care? He missed he missed a childbirth to play in the Easter Conference Finals. <laughs> yep. What? How how I never understood that. Like it wasn't great that he left because there was a lot of like if he sticks around, it's gonna be nice to have that salary. They'll have like a new like a slot in the cap slot, whatever. And it sucked that he went to Charlotte. It kind of hurt them in the 21 season. They definitely missed the Gordon Hayward piece. They never had anybody that could really fill it. But at the same time, like, what do you want out of him? He had a gruesome injury in his debut. Obviously, the whole season was chalked from there. He never played again. The second season, he's coming back into this shit show of a team, the 2019 team with Kyrie running around. And in his defense, 
break. He played 72 games that season. He was healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so he was healthy. And I think yeah. the one time he wasn't healthy was Lamarcus Aldridge hit him with a screen. He like hurt his hand or something. Maybe that was the year after. Could be wrong. They, was that Kemba? I thought that was Kemba. No, no, no. That it, it might was, it was both. It might have been both. I there think it was, was the year after where Kemba got hurt, but Hayward hurt himself hitting Aldridge. The year after he only played 52 games, so that would make okay. sense. But the, I mean, the man missed a childbirth, dude. Like anybody that's like Hayward was, you know, this or that, or he 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 was a bad Celtic. Like, yeah, he wasn't the same guy after he got hurt, and it sucked. He chose to come here, which rules. I always appreciate any player that decides to come to the Celtics. I think it's a really really great thing. And so Al Horford needs a shout out because he was kind of the first one to do it in this generation of players. But anytime someone's like, "Yes, I would like to play for the Celtics," that's a big thing in the NBA. For a while, the Celtics weren't getting free agents. They just started over the last decade. And Hayward coming here was a big part of that. That team was supposed to really be competitive. I know he talked about with Paul George, like they always think about like what could have been. And he kind of said like this year's team feels like a almost closure type thing with that, where it's like, okay, yes, this is probably what we could have had. Yeah, this is what it should have been. Yeah, it didn't work out, unfortunately. What in the agenda thing is probably very true. Like his agenda was probably trying to make sure he was right. And he wanted to make sure he got his looks. And then you have Tatum and Brown who are coming off this big time playoff run where they were both the stars and they're ready to prove Kyrie. themselves. And Kyrie's back and Kyrie's trying to get a good season in before he's a free agent. There's all that stuff going on. Horford's also got the free agency thing. And then Terry. of course, Terry Rozier, big part of the playoff run. He has to come off the bench. Yep. Just a weird thing. I think that's the the difference between this team and and that team is that there is more homegrown stuff going on here than that time. Yes, Tatum and Brown are still the same centerpieces, and Rozier was a key part of that. But now the stars are homegrown. The top guys are homegrown. And I think that goes a long way because they are someone or or faces that the other guys look to in, in terms of leadership. And they have this Celtic way about them, maybe. Then I agree. you have Horford, who technically is a transplant, but he has played more years in a Celtics uniform than KG. True. And then the rest, like, I don't know. A lot of shakeup this year, but the the guys they added are mature. And, and the newer faces on that Celtic team were not as mature. Brown, Tatum. Evidently so. <laughs> Evidently so. Marcus uh, yeah. Morris. Gordon just said the uh, the part everybody knew out loud. But all right, let's go to the email now. Let's see what people had to say uh, Hold up. in the email here. You do the email. I'll do the background. Let's show you. <laughs> yes, sir. I did not. All you. All right. <clears throat> First email we got from RJ. This is from the 30th. Uh, what's popping? It's hard being the man. Happy Saturday, guys. Thinking about the last two games and Pistons Raptors led me to a new article on Celtics blog and what production uh, and what it means to a production to keep playing without your leads. Um, it, it's a pretty short post, so we'll read it. I just had to check. Um, both Pistons and Raptors games are great for highlighting some things you didn't notice until you aren't, uh, until they aren't there. Against Detroit, the absence of JB from the game showed his importance in the defensive rotations as it took 24 minutes to figure out how to deva- defend Cade Cunningham effectively. Chris Stops may have missed his carpool buddy in the first two quarters as well, only scoring six points before intermission. Everyone plays a part. Against Toronto, we're all expecting Derek White to step up and take him and gets out. And while he got there, eventually it's hard to be the man, especially when the man 1.0 isn't on the floor attracting attention away from you. Oddly enough, I think the best player to help out Porzingis White and the rest, excuse me, get better uh, at being in the spotlight is Luke Cornett. Luke does Luke things regardless of who's on the floor or whether he gets the ball, and that's an important lesson when it's your turn to lead. You don't have things you aren't comfortable with. You just stay focused on things, uh, on doing things that keep you and your teammates in their comfort zones. I'll become curious to see who incorporates uh, that approach to their game first. I will say, I think this is part of what we talked about on Talking Seas, where it's tough to be the guy. And I think Tatum doesn't get enough help from the rest of the team um, in that sense. But uh, yeah, I mean, sure. I, I like all the points. Funny when you say it like that, Tatum doesn't get enough help. I, I Somebody stand on it. That and, like Twitter would be like, what do you mean Tatum doesn't have enough help? They don't get him enough looks. He's too self-reliant. And I don't yeah, know. They, they got to utilize him a little different. Like they got to kind of <laughs> utilize a lot of these guys equally where. They're just getting looks as a product of ball movement. Yeah, I agree. And it, I think they did it better in that Spurs game. You saw a lot more movement with Tatum at the recipient. It was great. Uh, receiving Tatum's yeah. start to the Spurs game is awesome. I didn't get to see the third quarter. Missed a lot of it. 
when I got back, I saw he was five or ten from three. So I'd imagine mm-hmm. there were some super cool dribbles somewhere in there. But when well, the game was closed game. in the first half, looked like he was playing for real. So good for him and good for the staff for figuring out how to get him looks mm-hmm. without him having to do it all. Agree. Good game. Next one. What's popping? Three things for the green cornet haters. Uh, from RJ Morning, guys. Thank you for the kind thoughts about the emails. I keep writing them because you two do such enjoyable work. Now that I've been kind, let me unload for a minute. To everyone who's having a hissy that Luke did well at his spot start, three things. First, who would you rather see at the end of the Celtics bench? Luke or Thanasis Antetokounmpo? That's what I thought. Shut up. Uh, good, second, good to whoever it is that bitched about Luke not being able to do it in the playoffs, go search YouTube for Leon Poe 2008, watch it, and shut up. Finally, mm. You're really going to complain about Luke doing smart things and going nine of 11 the night after Killian Hayes conducted a dumbass, uh, a clinic in dumbass basketball. Have you ever entertained the thought of paying attention during a basketball game instead of just scrolling for the Pat score or Red Sox trade rumors? Mm. Don't answer that. Just shut up. The Seas don't need Luke to be the second coming of Dave Cowens. They need him to be ready, hit his marks and not suck, which he does. Plus, he seems like a pretty good human being. Rattless to everyone who can't appreciate the good things like having both Luke and Nimi be well in the new year, RJ. I mean, it yes. is a great RJ email. <laughs> yes, we've said this a million times. I couldn't agree more, RJ. Absolutely. And I don't get anybody being mad that like Cornet had a good game. Like, what what is bad about that? It was Give crazy. Me one well, thing that could be bad about Cornet having a good people game. People focused on his poor defensive rotations and defensive play in the fourth quarter. But like, let's not act like the Celtics have much of another choice. Like, who else did you want to see them play in that spot? They played with the guys they had because they were missing half their fucking starting lineup. Come on. <laughs> we do it. Uh, but no, yeah, I agree. <clears throat> Leave Luke alone. He's a third string big. He does his job. <clears throat> What's popping? The ball dropped on San Antonio. Mm. As I write this, it is less than an hour from 2024 on the East Coast and three hours, 40 minutes here in San Francisco. And no, that's not a typo in the subject line. The New Year's ball dropped early and it fell squarely on the Spurs tonight. Apart from everyone <clears throat> in green having a great game, it was interesting to see how the Celtics defused Wemby's defensive contributions in the first half. With Porzingis out away from the basket, Wemby is not clogging the middle, making it a lot easier for the Seas to get points in the paint. Tatum and Cornette each had more blocks than he did, two each to Wemby's one. As uh, And as much fun as it was watching Derek White slam dunk, I think every Celtics fans held their breath for a moment when we all thought Derek might just block Wemby from behind for a split second. Well, uh, fun game. Nice to see us beat up on a lottery team to close out 2023. 20 games over 500. Of course, today's real star was the main Celtics flannel pajama uniforms modeled here by Rob Edwards. We looked at this. Happy New Year to all 2,000 subscribers uh, on HBTC. Be well, RJ. I still like these jerseys a lot. I think they're sick. Yeah, I mean, I'd be kind of heated if the Celtics wore them, but I don't really care what they do up in Maine. So go for it. (laughs) Sure. All right. Next email from Gerald Colston. What's popping Jalen Brown's game? What's up, boys? Hopefully everything's good. Since the start of the season, I believe JB has been the most improved all around. I mean, when you look at his game, the mid-range and aggressive finishes are impressive. I approach every game as if he's going to put someone on a poster. (laughs) The way way he approaches the game doesn't feel forced or rushed anymore. Do you believe he's been the most improved or do you think it's someone else? I think it's Jalen Brown. I think he's taking the most. You don't think it's Derek White? I thought you might think it's Derek White. (laughs) I think Derek White is doing all the things that he showed us he can do in the regular season and playoffs last year, just doing them more. I think Jalen Brown has made fundamental improvements to his game. So Jalen, to me, has taken the biggest in-season step. Because to start the year, he didn't look great. There was the weird, like, I don't know what I'm going to do anymore now that our team's much better and we have a lot of guys that can compete and do good things. But when... Porzingis went out in particular. I think he really stepped it up. I mean, he had that really great game against Milwaukee. Porzingis was in that one. They had some super cool link ups, some of my favorite plays of the season so far. But I did the article kind of like the duality of Jalen Brown, where like he's really, really great against Milwaukee. Then he was terrible against Orlando in the second half and was a almost symbol of how they got beat down. Since that Orlando game, he has been absolutely nails. He has been efficient, he's been careful. He's been decisive. Everything he's done has been positive, it feels like. There aren't a lot of games where you see him out there and you're like, maybe he just needs to realize it's not his night. That just doesn't happen. He's been on. He's done a great job of getting out and getting going early in the games. The first quarters from him have been unreal. And I think that's a really great place for him on this team. It's a great part for him to be a tone setter. Because Tatum is not a guy that gets going early. He's not. Traditionally, it's Ben Brown. It's very rare to see a big Tatum first quarter. Those are the days where Tatum is going to have like a 50 ball. If he's giving it to you in the first quarter, watch out. As for Brown, 
he's very, very important to the team as a whole, getting started, getting a lead, whatever you keeping him in a game if the other team's playing well. So shout out to Jalen. I think uh, we can all have a little bit more faith in him. And he had a good playoff last year until the Heat series. He was good. The numbers were good. The Heat series was bad. Very bad. Bad enough to erase your memory. Yeah. Jalen, big improvements this year. The playmaking has been huge. <clears throat> I mean, we've talked about it a bunch. But yeah, I, I think he's my most improved. <clears throat> Next thing we got, New Year. Same winning teams from Clay. Shout out, Clay. Uh, <clears throat> Happy New Year, fellas. Uh, with 2023 behind us. I'd like you guys. I'd like to i assume this means thank you guys for the quality content you put out on the daily basis for us these junkies who ver uh, ferociously consume all content that's great got you thank you uh, i gotta say 26 and 6 feels pretty good nice to see the guys do what they're supposed to against a team like san antonio and absolutely trounce them i do feel for the spurs especially trey jones what cruel irony to be named trey and not be able to hit one to save your life yeesh uh <clears throat> fun debate question for you guys this same spurs team we beat last night except with d white as their starting point guard how many games do they win Lastly, you gentlemen mentioned brackets uh, upcoming on your list show. Uh, I would like to throw my hat in the ring, a bracket of the best Boston little guys, Pritchard versus Flutie, Pedroia versus Barros, maybe some Danny Woodhead action. Could be fun. We'll throw it in there. Thanks again, fellas. Keep up the good work. Your homie Clay. Shout out, Clay. Hey, Clay. Uh, on the brackets, remind us in March, and we'll do it because it's March Madness, so we do a bracket every pod, uh, but we'll keep this in mind. I think that'd be fun. As far as the D-White with the San Antonio Spurs, I do think they win a decent amount more games. They desperately need a, a, a presence at the point guard spot who can do everything D white can do. What are they right now? What's the Spurs record? They are five and whatever five and 27. I'd say maybe give them five more wins, make them 10 and whatever, maybe 12 and whatever. I don't know. Like Derek white's awesome. I don't know how significantly he makes them like improves them. I do think Wemby would be better by default. So I, I think I'd probably put them on the trying to fight for the play in race rather than, worst team in the league <laughs> personally it is kind of funny that they're still terrible like they didn't really go out and do a whole lot but after the draft everyone was like watch out for the spurs they started the season they were three and two and everyone was like oh wait a second and then they just lost like 20 games straight <laughs> sucks <clears throat> very tough all right last email Gerald Colston says, what's popping comparison to JT? When we look at somebody like JT, his skills are very impressive. Everyone loves to compare him to maybe Danny Granger or Kobe. However, I believe his skill set is more like Carmelo Anthony. Their Danny numbers are very Carmelo. similar. <laughs> Their numbers are very similar for regular season stats. I believe they also have the mentality of I'm going to get mine now and they shouldn't in some instances. No diss to JT at all. I believe he's trying to translate his game to being a better offensive facilitator. In this article, you can see the numbers are somewhat similar. Appreciate you boys. Look at best season stats slash regular season stats. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Where are we looking here? Regular season stats. Listen, I understand the comparison. Tatum's a better player than Melo ever was. And I stand on that. He's a million times better as a defender. He's better as a playmaker. He's a better offensive hub. And for all the faults of his threes, I don't think it's as bad as it ever was with Mello. Maybe Mello was a better isolation scorer. Jason Tatum doesn't need to be that. And he's a better defender and he's a better um, <clears throat> playmaker than Mello ever was. I, I think Tatum is better than Carmelo Anthony ever was right now. So I think if you went right now, <laughs> took Mello's peak, his best season, and you put it up against Tatum's best season, or even like this year, the difference in assists would be crazy. The reason why Tatum's career assists is low, 3.4, because he spent a couple years not being a hub, not being somebody that they go to for huge parts of their offense's usage rate was not as high. Mm -hmm. Now that he's become a focal point of Boston's game plan, the ball is zipping around, and he, he does have a part in it. It's not perfect, but he does a good job of making reads. He, he's good on the drive. <laughs> Has his head on a swivel for kicks. When he plays out of the post, he's great at drawing a double and then hitting the open man. These are things I don't really think you would see a lot from Mello. Mello averaged over four assists once. Jason Tatum has averaged over four assists for the past four seasons. So, yeah, <clears throat> there's your answer. Uh, but I, I mean, it's interesting. I get it. Jason Tatum has won more playoff games than Mello already, I would assume. Right. I don't think that's is that can't, true. I don't actually can't really hurt yourself there. <clears throat> Really going on a limb. Well, I, I don't know. I I, I think no, it's closer than you might it's realize. Not, it's not close. Let me take a look. Playoff games has Jason Tatum won. <clears throat> Tatum has won 52 playoff games. Carmelo has won 
28 playoff games. You're right. Not close. <laughs> so there's that. All right. Let's head on over to the NBA section. Uh, actually, sorry. Before we do that, uh, let's play a little game very briefly from this book. Celtics Legends Alphabet. Let's oh. see if Sam can guess the second letter. It's Bird. Right back to Celtics Next. real quick. C for Bird. B. Wrong. Really? <laughs> yeah, incorrect. Try again. <laughs> Is it Brad? <clears throat> Wrong. Bill Russell. Yes, Mr. Bill Russell is the answer. There's Bill on the B for you. Very cool draw. <laughs> drawing. Excuse me. B is Phil Bill Russell, the greatest winning winner in the NBA history. Russell amassed 11 NBA championships during his 13-year Celtics career. He's second all-time in the NBA in career rebounds, a five-time MVP, 12-time All-Star, and considered the greatest defensive player in the history of the sport. A true Celtics legend. B is for Bill Russell. <clears throat> there we go. All right. And now let's move to the NBA part of the show with a new segment. Uh, that we are going to call. Did the Hornets win a game? Did the Hornets win a game? <laughs> We've moved on from the Pistons. The Pistons have escaped. Uh, and unfortunately, the Hornets w are now the focal points. Ten losses in a row for the Hornets. Uh, let's see. Do they have a chance to break it soon? Let me take let me take a look who they're playing. They're playing, the, they're playing the Nuggets tonight, so <laughs> probably going to make it 11. <laughs> um, past that, after the Nuggets, they got Sacramento, then Chicago twice. So those Bulls games are probably going to be their best chance, but the Bulls have been good. So tough sledding. <laughs> tough, Please tough be sledding serious, Sacramento. For the for the good of the NBA, there should always be a twenty plus losing streak to keep your eyes on. Yep, I agree. Who have the Hornets lost to in their recent games? Too has it been anybody like any any telling losses? Suns, Lakers, Clippers, Nuggets, Pacers. Lost to the Raptors by fifteen is pretty bad. Mm-hmm. You can't lose to the Raptors. Um, that said, their last win was also over the Raptors, so that's also pretty telling. They beat the Celtics too. <laughs> they have beaten the Celtics, but I also uh, don't know if their streak has too much of a chance of getting up to what Detroit's was, or no even chance. close to it. No. Just because Lamelo is going to be back uh, at some time. Is he? I thought he was out for a while. I don't think he's out for the season. Lamelo ball injury. <clears throat> Let me double check. Maybe you're right. Um, Lamelo tonight is he still out? He's missed the last fifteen games, but he's getting closer to a turn. You see, you're right. He'll be back eventually. Yeah, like <laughs> they're actually like not terrible with Lamelo. Before he got hurt, they were kind of like lurking around the play in, like they had a chance of being there. Now yeah. I think it's dead. But they, yeah, I don't think they're gonna lose like Pistons level amount of games. <clears throat> I don't no. know if it gets to twenty. The Hornets this season are five and ten with Lamelo, uh, and since he's been out, they are. Where's the NBA standings? Five and ten with Lamelo. Without Lamelo, they are two and thirteen. So, <clears throat> pretty big difference there. Um, but yeah, all right. Let's look at the rest of the NBA standings. We won't spend the whole time on the Hornets, but that has officially replaced our Pistons uh, for the segment of have they won yet? NBA standings. Taking a look around real quick. Celtics. Longest win streak in the NBA, uh, currently at six games. Uh, I don't think anybody else is at five. Uh, I think the Celtics are um, leading by a decent amount. The closest thing to the Celtics is four uh, with the Thunder. Uh, Nuggets just lost their last game. <clears throat> it's true. One of the win streaks has to go down. Suns have won three in a row. They're figuring it out. Um, the Lakers, Rockets, and Warriors have all lost a lot of the recent games. They're not doing too, too hot right now. Lakers, um, three and seven in the last ten. That's not heartbreaking. Good. Not good. I, Warriors, I five and five. That. <laughs> Warriors, five and five. Mavs, four and six, slowing down a little bit as well. Uh, in the East, Magic and Pacers, both four and six in the last ten. The Nets are two and eight in their last ten. They're falling down the standings. Knicks won their first game with OG Ananobi today. Uh, they have now won one in a row, and they're in the eighth seed. Um, the Hawks are four and six in the last 10. The Bulls are six and four in their last 10. They're figuring it out. Uh, and then the Raptors and the Wizards are both pretty tragic, if you ask me. So there's that. <laughs> the Bucks just kind of won't fuck off, will they? <laughs> no, nah, they're good. They're real good. They just won't. <laughs> Nine and one in their last 10. The Celtics just can't get any real separation. Two games above the Bucks. Not terrible. Even but... Philly, they're starting to get a bit of a lead on four games ahead of them. Yeah. Philly, I uh, dealt with some injuries in there. 
it's pretty clear Celtics, Bucks, Sixers, and then everyone else right now. Uh, even the Knicks are only one and a half games out of the four seed. This clump of Heat, Magic, Cavs, Pacers, Knicks are pretty tight knit. Uh, and then the Nets and the Bulls have that next spot uh, eh, with the Hawks, I guess, sneaking around in there too. But <clears throat> past that, it is pretty bad. <laughs> Magic, rough four and six in the last 10. Yeah, they've been slowing down. They've been slowing down significantly. That two game series against the Celtics really hit them like a truck. Um, but speaking of the Knicks, as we were talking about them, did just make that trade for OG Ananobi. And they also just extended Miles McBride. I think I mentioned when they and made they the trade, won. we were talking about it. Uh, they did just win that he could potentially step up and play a bigger role for them. And it sounds like that's the plan. Three years, $13 million. Uh, all of it <clears throat> is guaranteed. Good deal for Miles McBride. Good defender. Um, he played today, didn't play a ton. Uh, but he he's just, you know, a guy who can give you quality minutes at the point guard spot. Defends well, so Tibbs is going to like him. It, no har- harm in giving him uh, a cheap contract like that. If it's somebody you trust, there is absolutely no harm in it, especially with the new CBA. What's that, roughly $4.3 million a year? Like, that's a pretty solid deal to have somebody that's a part of your rotation on. And it's tradable. Yeah. Especially if he starts playing well. Like, teams will be like, wait, they, they, you could fit the TPE. Oh, it'd be sick. Exactly. Right? 100%. So good for them, I guess. Sure. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Lakers, meanwhile, are potentially eyeing DeJounte Murray. Oh, should he Lakers become available? Awesome. Uh, according to Shams of The Athletic, Lakers are a team, are quote, a team to keep an eye on as a potential landing spot for Murray should he get dealt. Uh, and it would make a lot of sense for Los Angeles. Another report from Yovan Buha of The Athletic saying uh, maybe you go for Royce O'Neal and Dorian Finney Smith. Those are two guys Lakers have an interest in. However, I think DeJounte Murray is the far more interesting guy, mostly because he'd be a guy a lot of people are going after. If it's the Lakers, sure, it makes sense. But my question to you is what other teams do you think could potentially look to trade for DeJounte Murray if the Hawks decide to Ooh, trade? This is where it gets fun, huh? Yes, it does. Hmm. <laughs> I think Brooklyn is still a great landing spot for him if they decide to keep things together. Brooklyn's there. not bad. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Forgive me. If I am like missing like the most obvious person ever, Orlando could kind of use a point guard, right? They could use a point guard, yeah. Yeah, they've got faults, but you could. I think if I'm Orlando, I might start knocking on the door for Dejounte Murray. I'd like it. Makes sense. Yeah, they're kind of on the on the doorstep of being competitive. They've had a rough stretch since the hot start, and they could certainly use a little bit of uh, somebody that's been around the block on their roster because they don't have a ton of that. I think he would be a fun fit. It would be somebody I root for. Let's see who else is there. You want to know it would be annoying, but very, very makes a lot of sense. Who? The Knicks? Miami. Miami. Miami There is a better guy to play off the ball. You know what I mean? Like he's not like Trey Young where you'd be putting Murray next to another guard that's going to need the ball. Exactly. You put him at the point guard. You Excuse me, you trade Lowry and or Duncan Robinson with picks, um, and maybe you throw in Jovich or Highsmith or something, um, and you go out and get uh, Murray, and you run DeJounte Murray, Tyler Hero, Jaime Jaquez, Jimmy Butler, Pam Adebayo. That's kind of gross. That's that's kind of a very good lineup, especially considering... Miami, are you training Duncan Robinson right now? <laughs> for DeJounte Murray, yeah. I mean, DeJounte Murray is shooting a career-high... Uh, 38 percent from three on six attempts a night so yeah you are i am i know duncan robinson's been a big big help for them this year he's been great like playing like himself is huge uh yeah miami would be annoying i'm just trying to flip through the rest of the teams milwaukee no why you have dane yeah i think you could play both get some size some defense in there that's what Um, they said about atlanta Uh, I think it's, they're different. They are different. I think it's a little different, but who would you rather have having their ball in their hands en- enough? Dame or uh, Dame, but Dame, but you get both, I think. And it's not like Dame's not used to playing with another guy who needs the ball sometimes. He's played with CJ for years. Sure. I, I, I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's it's not terrible. You know, I changed my mind. I have a new perfect spot and it's Minnesota. That'd be electric. <clears throat> in uh two K save, I did that trade. Good. Good trade. <laughs> it was uh, idea, but I did it. It would be tough to make the money work. You'd have to throw in a few different salaries. You could probably get there with Kyle Anderson, Shake Milton, and Nikhil Alexander Walker, I think would get you there. Um, but like you get that done. The issue is 
you don't really have the picks because you don't have any picks. So that might be where, <clears throat> excuse me, where a deal gets halted. Um, because the Timberwolves don't have any picks to trade. <clears throat> they could trade some swaps, but not much going on there. So uh, there's no... Uh, mm. I don't even remember what I was about to say. Oh, there, there's... I don't think the salary works, and there's no for way what? it would happen. Mm. Phoenix should just trade Bradley Beal for DeJounte Murray. There was no salary yeah. cap. Well, you could trade Beal for <clears throat> DeJounte Murray and like DeAndre Hunter and then give up picks as well or something. I'd do that. I'd do that but in a heartbeat. The, yeah, the issue is they don't have any one, picks. Yeah, it, literally zero picks that it can be traded. <clears throat> um I don't know. I would have said the Clippers before the James Harden trade. It doesn't really make sense now. I mean, you could still do it, but you don't need it. Uh, I wouldn't hate it for the Pacers. It's kind of an awkward fit because Halliburton needs the ball in his hands, but like they need defense in a bad, bad way. Um, <clears throat> but I'm it's still not great. Next to any more like point guards, I'm just not. Uh, the Pelicans. You move the Pelicans CJ, is one I could see. You move CJ back off the ball, and then you bring in Dejounte Murray. I just wonder what you'd give up for it. Like, what would they want? You probably have to get out of Jones at the very least. <clears throat> well, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, the Kings, no. The Mavs, no. Lakers, we just talked about it. If Fred Van Fleet wasn't there, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, say the Rockets were good. I wonder if the Jazz would do it. You get a real point guard in there next to Laurie. Take a flip some of the picks you've got. Get a real player. I don't hate it for the Jazz, but I don't know. I think it makes most sense for the Heat, as annoying as it would be. Anyways, all right. Uh, last NBA thing we've got is the Knicks are not targeting Donovan Mitchell. I repeat, they're not. Sam, I swear, they're not targeting Donovan Mitchell. Mark Stein, Steinlein, reported that the Knicks, quote, do not intend to mount an all-out pursuit of Mitchell ahead of the trade deadline this year. Uh, also, the Cavaliers, for that matter, signaled to rival teams throughout December that they aren't prepared to entertain Mitchell overtures anyways. Mm. So you asked me what the point of this reporting is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the purpose of all this is. I just saw it. And well, it means the cat. I think the Cavs part of this is more valuable. It's like, oh, like, I guess they really think he's going to stick around or opt in next summer, huh? Do you think so? No. <laughs> you think he's gone? Yeah. I, I just don't think he wants to be there. Do you know what is the OG and an OB trade? If you think about it from that perspective, you're like, Okay, so they're trying to make a team to bring Donovan Mitchell in in free agency. <laughs> sure. Right? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Jalen Brunson, Donovan Mitchell, OG Ananobi is disgusting. That's a great top three. That's a title top three, I think. Certainly up there. <clears throat> they're they're in, in the realm of have a chance. Uh, it's still not competing with the Celtics and Bucks, but it is puts them in that. Like, no, I, I think they're competitive. I, I just think, yeah. I almost think that's like a weird, like, Almost Dejounte Murray fit of like, oh no! I, I know Donovan Mitchell is not a, a a point guard type, but he does still like have the ball a good amount, and so does Darius Garland. That's part of the reason like the Cavs haven't been like spectacular, particularly in the playoffs. Like, so he, like, I understand, put, but there's next to another smaller guard, and I understand, but there's too many there's too many talented guards for you to avoid some of those fits around the league. Like, you're not going to just not pick up. Like, you're going to go to a point where everybody has a really great guy who needs the ball, and then what? Dejounte Murray's a free agent, and no one wants him because uh, it wouldn't work. Well, free like, you just kind of have to figure it out. I know, but like, almost every team in the league has a ball dominant guard right now. There's like two, and Donovan Mitchell's not signing with them. <laughs> I just yeah, like this is this is a trade. This is not what's a trade. I'm talking about they're setting up to try to sign. Him oh, to, to try and court him in free agency. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> That's a little different. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, I yeah. still stand by it. I think it's like kind of a weird fit. I don't know if you're gonna get the most out of it, but if if you're not like giving anybody up to get him, like, sure you can try. Yeah, you try to clear the space now, and then you go after him. But all right, that was about it. Uh, let's get into the rat list here, Sam. Would you like to kick us off? Ooh, would I? Rat list uh, is people that say Happy New Year's instead of New Year. Mm. Uh, lots of messages going around or posts on social where people are saying Happy New Year's with an S. I hate to break it to yep. you, but 
actually what people should be saying is happy new year because yep. the new year has arrived it is happy new i know year. i know the thought is whoa we're talking about new year's eve or new year's day but like yeah but still no no just not correct it is happy new year correct yes uh rat list uh all the slow drivers that i ran into today it was very annoying wasn't a big fan uh, i came home today after being out in boston yesterday uh, and i hit the highway and everyone decided to go under the speed limit and i was none too pleased very simple rat list that's all there is to it but it just really pissed me off and i wasn't a big fan also uh, well actually i'll save that one i'll keep it separate rat list but yeah the people driving home today were annoying out, out on traffic out on people g g pick a lane don't don't make a wall the people who make a wall are the worst like go around yeah, the wall pick people somewhere. are terrible <clears throat> yeah out bad uh ratless my car so my my car radio does this thing where it doesn't always turn off sure when i turn my car off so like the radio will stay on yeah and what happens if i go away so i went away this week and i forgot to manually shut it off before i left <laughs> is it'll drain my battery battery but yesterday yeah. i went i got up and i went to drive to the gym and i got my car turns on. i'm like okay i'm gonna get gas i go to the gas station i shut off at the pump pump my car and then all of a sudden it's not turning on so i had yeah. this whole ordeal like had to jump it my dad used to work with cars so like we have a little bit of a discussion of what's going on and what he thinks and things like that anyway he takes it because we finally get it to restart. We swap cars. I go about my day. I come home. Apparently, like, it's been working okay. Like, he took it out. So, I, I bring it <laughs> with me last night. Go mm -hmm. to Providence, you know, like, drive around a little bit. Wake up this morning. I go to move my car from where it was parked around to the front of the building. Mm -hmm. Works fine. Shut it off. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, I didn't turn off my radio. I don't want to risk this. And then I go to turn it on. So I turn off the radio. It will not start. <laughs> but then then 10 minutes later, it decides it wants to start. Yeah. But how old is your car? 1994. It's time. It, it's it's, it's, it's going to be time high. soon. I like my <laughs> it's, car, man. It is. I don't want to waste money on a car if like, I already have a car. It is 30 years old. I'm not saying you need to do it now. I'm, I'm not just 30 saying, years old. I haven't had it this whole time. We got it had like no miles on. I'm saying the car is 30 years old. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> I'm not saying it needs to happen, but the, the car is tell, giving you signs that it is almost time. Um, <clears throat> I I'm That's I used ass. to drive. Yeah, I know. I used to drive. The oldest car I had was an 09, and I drove that for a few years. Past that, Flex. I just <clears throat> well, <laughs> it I was like in a flex. Car. I was in my car. I, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the car. I've been in your car. It's a fine car. It's just <clears throat> getting to time is all I'm saying. Uh, <clears throat> Ratless, these two people that were walking in front of us last night, <clears throat> me and Danny were walking from the tea stop. We went to the liquor store. And then we were going to the apartment that we were going to hang out at. <clears throat> we're walking, whatever. These two people in front of us were walking very slow. And so we were just, you know, Did we, you we were, them? no, we were, we were effectively like about to go around them or whatever. And then they just stopped. Mm. They stopped. Listen, no, ready? It gets worse. They stopped, oh, oh, moved to the side, let us walk past them, and then kept walking behind us. They just they let us pass them, but they did it in like the most awkward way they could possibly let us pass them. Mm. Just like go single file, keep walking, and let us go, or just like scooch over to the side. Don't dead stop. Go to the side, stare at us while we pass you, and then walk behind us. You're the assholes here, not us. You should us. have mace for that. <laughs> yeah, like, what are we doing? <laughs> Just mace them. The worst. Just the worst. That pissed me <laughs> off yesterday. It was weird. So, uh, Ratless, this pizza place I went to yesterday. Yeah. Um, I like this place. I went and I got a, a sandwich. I love the sandwich. <laughs> but anyways, I, I call ahead. I order for pickup. So I go in to pick it up. And... Uh, Everybody and their mother decided they would like some pizza tonight. So the line sure. is out the door. The problem and the reason why this is on the rat list is because they do not have two separate lines for pickup and ordering. So I'm fucking standing there as uh, I was going to say Joey, but then I don't want it to be Joey Spatula. Uh, we'll say Jimmy is sitting there trying to decide which fucking type of pizza he would like the one with the the vegetables or pepperoni he's like oh like what's that one oh what's that one and i've already called in put in my order all i need to do is pay and leave 
mm-hmm. need to have separate order, uh, lines for that. It was a big waste of time. There was no order. They eventually were like, who's next? And like nobody said anything. And I clearly was not next. But I was like, oh, yeah, like I'm just picking up. And they were like, OK. <laughs> and then I got out of there. But there were like mad people like these people were like, is he in front of us? Like, I don't know. It's like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like they should have. This is where you order. This is where you pick up. I went in like there's two doors. There's like a there's like a entrance way. And on one side, there's a door on the other side. There's a door. And on the left side, that's where all the people were lined up out of. I went in the right side because I was like, oh, there's no way all these people are waiting for pickup. Mm. And there were some people waiting for pickup. So very poor, <laughs> very, very poor from the pizza establishment, despite yeah, the food being great. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, Ratless, this dude at McDonald's. So we were hungry last night. So we went to McDonald's and you'll know this type of person as soon as I say it. And they're the worst. Just full blaring speaker in the backpack, dude. No one needs to listen to your music. No, no, one, like you, no one needs to listen to what you're listening to. This he wasn't even playing. One. He wasn't even playing music. He was just playing beats that he clearly made. And they were bad. Well, that's why he was doing it. <laughs> I know, but then he just started playing real music. So, like, he, he was just, like, he bumping shit on a playlist. It was bad. Like, dude, you're in a tiny McDonald's with hella people waiting. They have music playing in the back. We can hear your music. My ears are bleeding. No, like, turn it off. Stop. You if you go like into a building, they're the day. worst. They're bad on the street. They're bad in the T stations. But in a confined space in a building, fuck you. Turn it off. Mm. It's so bad. That's that's on un- rat list is my work fantasy football league. Ah. So my work fantasy football league, I'm in the championship. Sure. And uh as anybody that may like football knows, we just passed week 17. There's one mm-hmm. week remaining in the season. Now, anybody that is into fantasy football would know typically you don't have any fantasy implications on the last week. You know why? People get benched because they sit people. Yep. My work league, the championship game is two weeks long. So That's my uh, 23 point lead is meaningless right now. <laughs> and I have to hope I pick the right guys who aren't going to sit on Sunday. This yep. is a catastrophe. And I may lose $200 because of this. Mm hmm. Who are you playing? Just somebody that we wouldn't Some know. Guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even that's if, bad. Even if I gave you the name, what is that going to do? I know. I wasn't sure. I mean, I know some people you work with. That's why I asked. <laughs> you do? Um, oh, I'm thinking like people other I'm people from with? your people from your old work. Is oh, you know what? Of. Rat list, my friends. Mm. This is an okay. ongoing rat list. This is the one thing in my life. That truly gets under my skin, which sounds really funny coming from me, but a lot of it's just jokes. My friends, who I've been friends with for like 10, 12 years now, have a fantasy football league, and they refuse to let me join. (laughs) They refuse to let me join. There have been times (laughs) over the years. Now, I have not always wanted to be a part of it. It's sure. not me saying, like, fuck you, I'm not going to join your league. It's just been, like, I'm busy or, like, I think I was playing high school basketball one time. I wasn't really sure, sure football. Sure. Like, there have been implications for that. But there have been times I've wanted to join, and I've made it known that I wanted to join. And I understand there are only a certain amount of spots. But there have been times that my friends have gone outside of the group to find other people to put in over me. <laughs> and to this day... It is one of the things in my life that I just detest. Who is it? Is it like Joe and Frank in them? It's them, but like it's other people too. Like, and apparently, like Frank has been like, yo, let him play. And people are like, no. <laughs> Cause I don't like football. I don't like care for football, but I, I like fantasy football. Yeah. I put together sure. a fantasy league this year that Jack yeah. with me. I yeah. like playing it. Yeah. That's uh very funny. <laughs> I will say we have a fantasy league that we've had since high school, like one of those like long yeah. standing ones, whatever. And we have like added people to it. <laughs> we, we have let people in. Yeah, but you don't want to get too many teams. Like I do get that part too. But we got twelve. Spot opens up. <clears throat> yeah. Don't go above me and get somebody that like we don't even talk to. Somebody's yeah, not even bad. in the group chat. <laughs> that's bad. That, that's, that's ass. That's a tough look. That's a tough one. Unbelievable! You are getting kind of screwed. You are no, I'm, I'm, close. yeah, I'm getting fucked. That is very funny. Uh, I don't think I have any other rattlers. No, we'll I think I'm, I'm good. Yeah.
believe it. All right. Thank y'all for tuning in. We appreciate it very much. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Join over 2,000 others. I'm still so hyped we hit that. That is so cool. Uh, you know, I can't wait for someone in the comments to <laughs> stop swearing. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in. Subscribe to About Them Celtics. Leave us a review on Apple if you haven't yet. Let me go see if we have any new ones since the last time I asked. I'm going to guess no, but I'm going to no, check anyways. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have any new reviews? If you're listening to this right now and you hear me talking, Go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Say something nice. We would appreciate it. Uh, no, the last one here is still one that says I look like Yankee. So, cool. <laughs> uh, please go leave us a review so that's not the first one I see every time. Thank I you for tuning in. <laughs> leave us I five like stars on Spotify as well and follow us there. Uh, we're almost at 30 followers on Spotify. So, if you do listen on Spotify, go follow us. Don't just listen to it. Hit the follow button so it helps us the algorithm. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in. I'll let Sam, I'll let Sam wrap it up. Put to the top of my page. Hey, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, you're on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything else we do. On top of these full-length pods, we do game recaps on days we don't record a pod, but there are things to talk about. We also do Talk and Seize with Bobby Kravitsky. One came out yesterday as you're hearing this. We also do little trade breakdown idea videos and also film breakdowns every once in a while, so make sure you hit the bell. So you don't miss any of those. Also, 30 minutes before every game, we're live here and on Facebook and Twitter. But if you hit the bell, you won't miss the ones on YouTube. Who doesn't want that? Like Jack said, on the streaming platform, Spotify, Apple, make sure you follow us. Leave a five-star review. Say something nice about the pod. If you follow our full-length audio versions of the pod and game recaps will be right to your inbox. So you won't have to search for them at all. If you want to reach out to us and be on the email list, you can reach out to hbtcpod at gmail.com. You see RJ do it. You've seen Gerald do it a couple times. And also Clay was in on the fun today. So you want to make sure you join and, and mm -hmm. let us know what you're talking about and thinking about these uh, games. You got something to I'll, say. Just a little teaser here. I'm just going to put it on the screen. Might 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 come back soon. All I'm saying. Oh, playback? Just saying we could say follow people us on follow playback. us again. Do follow us on playback. Wink, wink. Wait, what wink, did you wink. say? I said it could be coming again? back soon. We said we could be coming back on playback soon. That's oh, all I said. I said I we could be coming back soon. To do the games. <clears throat> oh, we did. We do have. We will have access to watch the games pass the block, and we will have twenty passes to give out to people watching. But it's oh nice twenty viewers, so it's capped. But we, that is, I believe, that has been added. I've gotten contact with people. Thanks for, for the good news. Out. Yeah. So we're we we we're, we've been trying, right? We, we want we. Yeah, I like the playback. It just we got clapped, but we'll be back. All right. Well, follow us on socials as well as playback. At How About Them Seas, that's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook is just the name of the podcast. Our pregame streams are there, as well as YouTube and Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's Mon NBA. Mine is at Samuel France NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Check, check, go.